Hello everyone. Welcome to the practice session of PMP exam questions and answers for July. Just like the previous months, in today's session, we'll be solving some medium to high difficulty level PMP exam questions very similar to your actual exam. Also, if you have not watched the previous Q&A sessions, I would highly encourage you to check them out, okay? I'm sure that you will find them immensely helpful for your PMP exam. I will link the entire playlist in the description section of this video. If you are preparing for the PMP exam, you can use today's class to assess how well you are prepared for the exam. So out of the five questions that we'll be solving today, the target would be to get all the five out of the five questions correct. However, the minimum expectation is that you should get at least four out of the five questions correct to consider yourself fairly well prepared for the PMP exam. Now, anything less than that, you might need a bit more preparation, okay? Also, before we get the discussion started, guys, I would like to introduce you to my YouTube membership. OK, so you can join my monthly memberships using the join button on the screen or on your mobile app, whichever YouTube version you are using. So I have kept the prices extremely, extremely affordable. So there is a basic tier and there is an advanced tier of membership. And within this membership community, I give daily tips about PMP exam preparation and processes. OK, so often over the YouTube videos, it is not possible for me to go through each and every detail and each and every tip and strategy that I'm willing to share with all of you guys. So what I have done within this membership communities is I have collated all those information in form of daily posts, which you will receive if you are a part of this basic membership. And if you think that doing some one to one live stream sessions with me will be helpful for you in terms of getting your preparation up to speed or strategize with respect to whatever prep strategy you are using with the advanced membership tier, you get access to my live doubt clearing sessions, which I hold fortnightly. So you can join those if you think that is something that you are looking for. Right. So question number one, guys. Please read the question and try to answer it before we solve this together. You can pause the video here if you wish to. This should be an easy one to start with. Okay, so let's go for it. Right, so let's get started. A new product development project will require skills which are quite niche and currently unavailable within the existing team members. Okay, what should the project manager do to enable initiation of this project okay and the key word to note here in the question stem is initiation right so let's look at the options one by one develop a detailed scope statement now you tell me guys does scope statement happen in the initiation stage of the project or in the planning stage of the project it happens in the planning stage of the project right so that is why this is outrightly incorrect let's look at option b plan robust quality control again quality control is happening in the execution stage of a project right it does not happen in the initiation stage of the project hence this is also an incorrect option let's look at option c most obvious one update the project charter so this probably is the right answer because uh, updating the project charter or creating the project charter and reviewing it with your sponsor etc etc that happens in the initiation stage of the project right so hopefully c is the right answer but let's look at option d first as well develop an outsourcing plan now let's say when you are developing an outsourcing plan essentially what you are doing you are developing a procurement plan right and when is the procurement plan developed it is developed in the planning stage of the project not in the initiation stage of the project right so this is an easy one guys so this is also incorrect option d is also incorrect because outsourcing plan or procurement plan let's say is developed in the planning stage of the project not in the initiation so the correct answer to this question is option c okay so question number two guys please pause the video read the question and try to answer it before we take this together okay right so let's get started during the execution stage of a sprint cycle the product owner is reassigned to another project okay the team has expressed disapproval for the move citing the fact that the product owner is extremely talented and has very strong servant leadership skills 
or let's say servant leadership capabilities. Which of the following actions by the project manager can help in this situation? So what is happening is overall your team is a bit demotivated because probably they were having a good rapport with the product owner. Now that product owner is basically getting reassigned to another project. And of course there is a bit of demotivation or let's say sort of an uncomfortable situation which your team is experiencing, right? So how you as the project manager or as the scrum master in this situation help your team. Okay, so let's go to the options one by one. Plan a brainstorming session with the project management office. This is random guys, right? Why the project management office will sit and do a brainstorming for your project specifically, right? Because they have a portfolio of projects that they are managing or they are, let's say, reviewing or let's say they are being accountable for. Okay, so that is why your project, why it is special. So it is your problem that your team is demotivated. So you need to manage it yourself, right? So involving the PMO is a very far-fetched option here. So that is why option A is outrightly incorrect. Let's look at option B. Assign another product owner with the same skill set. Okay let's uh, hold this option for now okay so let's hold it for now option c schedule a team motivation training with hr okay that is also quite quite random and let's say too broad as an option right because team motivation training with hr it can be anything under the sun which leads to motivation okay now if your team is facing a problem and instead of yourself going into the situation and trying to solve it with your team you are calling an hr that hey come look my team is demotivated please provide them some training and get them motivated uh this is sort of a bit non-pragmatic approach i'd say okay so and i hope none of you have selected this option as well because scheduling a team motivation training with hr in this situation it's a it's a very very broad option you can do it anyways right so team motivation is anyways important so why is this option very special for the situation that has been discussed in the question right so that is why option c is incorrect let's look at option d apply emotional intelligence techniques to motivate the team okay this is also a good option because it is talking about emotional intelligence which is let's say one of the key tools of servant leadership right so we have eliminated option a we have eliminated option c now we are stuck with option b and option d okay. now if you look at option b very closely guys assigning another product owner with the same skill set theoretically it may sound okay right because you might have you might say that okay the new product owner which i'm bringing to the team he or she will also have the same skill set the same servant leadership capability so they might gel with the team uh, very easily or very quickly right however it is important to note here is how pragmatic or how realistic is the situation right you are in a project it is in the execution stage right you mind that it's not in the planning or let's say not in the initiation stage now um you are already into a sprint and uh, you are looking for a product owner who is an exact replica of the person who has left or who has been reassigned in this scenario, right? So is this uh, really feasible? I don't think it is, right? Because even if you are able to find the best case scenario, let's say you are able to find a product owner who is, let's say, an exact replica of the product owner who has left your team at the moment, will he or she be available to uh, reallocate, get reallocated from the project or the work they are doing at the moment into your project, right? So that reallocation might not happen, right? So that functional manager or that sponsor might not release that product owner to come and work with your team now, right? And that is also, let's say, incorrect primarily because of it is a non-realistic or let's say a non-pragmatic situation, which the option is hinting at, which is theoretically possible, but practically it is an impossible thing to happen, let's say. Okay, let's put it very straight. So option B is uh, totally incorrect and the correct answer to this question is option D which is to apply emotional intelligence techniques to motivate the project team. Now, this option might look quite broad. However, it touches all the necessary aspects of servant leadership. So, for example, emotional intelligence, motivating the team, etc., etc. Now, I'm not saying that this option is the 100% correct option which I have to go for. However, in this scenario, option A, option B and option C are outrightly incorrect. Okay, option A, option B and option C are totally incorrect. However, option D at least makes some sense to proceed with. And that is why in your PMP exam, your focus should be on selecting not the 100% correct answer, which were like matches all the tick boxes of a perfect answer however your focus should be to select the best answer out of the four okay and that option is option d in this scenario so the correct answer to this question is option d if you're liking the video guys please press the like button your support goes a long way to help this channel grow also your likes and comments help me to understand that you value such educational content on youtube and motivates me to prepare more such videos like this to help you with your PMP exam preparation. And now 
let's move on to question number three all right so question number three guys please uh, pause the video read the question and try to answer it before we take this together the drill will remain the same okay go for it right a project team is in the performing stage during execution okay however there have been some recent altercations within one of the team members who believes that the project is not being managed properly okay now note the word performing in this scenario okay so what is the performing stage of a team okay so to understand that you need to go back and understand the tuckman's team ladder which is part of your pmp exam syllabus so what is tuckman's team building ladder it talks about the five stages of a team building scenario in a project situation okay starting with forming then it is like storming then it is norming then it is performing and finally it is adjourning okay so please go back to your pmb okay 7th edition or google the term tuckman's team building ladder and try to understand what are the key features of the forming stage the key features of the storming stage norming stage performing stage and the adjourning stage now if we talk of the performing stage here which is the scenario given to you in this question this is where the team is like super super motivated they have all the resources they have all the skill set that is required for them to perform and they are performing to match the project with the success criteria right and they are working towards making the project a huge success that is when performing happens in a tuckman's linear model of group development or let's say team development in a project management situation now if you go back to this situation or if you go back to this question a project team is in the performing stage during execution however there has been some altercations happening with one of the team members so sort of a pullback or sort of a challenge that you are facing as a project manager in the performing stage of a project where ideally this kind of situation should not happen however it is unfortunate that it is happening here now how should the project manager respond okay so let's look at the options one by one option a discuss the team ground rules with the individual and okay sorry for this typo guys and seek to understand the concerns okay this looks like a sort of a okay option okay you discuss the team ground rules with this individual who is having uh, the problem or is not being able to gel with the situation and you also try to understand what is making him or her feel that uh, the project is not being managed properly so basically you are trying to understand the concerns of that team member which is sort of a data gathering let's say that you are doing at the moment okay let's look at option b apply emotional intelligence techniques to motivate the team okay now this is an incorrect option guys and the reason why this option is incorrect because of the very very broad nature of this answer option okay now applying emotional intelligence techniques to motivate the team uh, can mean a lot of uh, let's say tools and techniques that you can apply however how will you address the root cause of this situation which is that one team member who is feeling out of the place okay now if you give a generic training of uh, emotional intelligence to all the team member this team member might get even more demotivated right because you have not listened to his or her concerns and you are like sort of giving some gyan with the emotional intelligence right so that is generally not a pragmatic thing to do right that is why option b is definitely incorrect let's look at option c schedule individual meetings with the team members and ask for their preferred resolution method okay now this is sort of a exploratory stage or let's say it is sort of a exploratory uh, approach that you are taking that you are scheduling individual meetings with all the team members asking for their preferred resolution method now each of the team members can come up with their own resolution method so what will you do okay do you then try to get into a convergence and try to come to a solution with uh, combining all the preferred solution methods which your team members have provided theoretically possible but is it practically feasible probably not right because if you have 10 team members they will come up with 10 solutions now if you are trying to find a middle ground with all the 10 solutions uh, imagine the level of complexity that you are creating for you okay and for the project so that is why option c is definitely incorrect because it is not a practical approach with respect to standard project management scenarios let's look at option d review the stakeholder engagement plan to identify a suitable resolution okay now some of you might say that okay uh, ray i am reviewing the uh, document and in many of your videos you have mentioned that okay uh, you need to review before you take action etc etc of course it's true guys but i think you missed the second bit of that uh, entire approach which i was teaching you in one of the previous sessions that whatever you do 
in review before act it has to be in context of, of the project management scenario or in context of the situation that you are being presented with it definitely cannot be a one size fits all where you just uh, see this word review and mark this option correct and move on okay that is very foolish thing to do right hence if you look at review okay this is okay you are reviewing something but what are you reviewing guys you are reviewing a stakeholder engagement plan okay is it the right document to review in this situation because as of now you do not have any stakeholders involved in the situation which you are facing it is only your team members right probably if it would have said that okay review the uh, team charter or let's say review the communications management plan that might have made some sense okay however reviewing the stakeholder register or the let's say the stakeholder engagement plan in this scenario doesn't make any sense because it is an incorrect document to review hence option d is incorrect right and the correct answer to this question is option a which is to discuss the team ground rules with the individual and seek to understand the concerns which the individual is facing so that way at least you are getting the individual uh, aligned with the team ground rules which uh, they need to follow number one and secondly you are also addressing it from the servant leadership approach where you are actually seeking to understand the problem or the concern uh, that person is facing and probably try to find a resolution with with that person right so you are addressing really the root cause of the problem in this situation so the correct answer is option a okay so question number four guys please read the question and try to answer it before we take this together you can pause the video here as well if you wish to right a focused user group has communicated to the product owner that the released version of the minimum viable product is not meeting their expectations so if you are preparing for your pmp exam guys i hope you know by now that what is a minimum viable product okay if not you can go back and check the agile related videos on my channel or you can go back and study your agile practice guide or the textbook or the online course that you are following okay so minimum viable product is not meeting their expectations okay which action could have helped to avoid this issue now to cut the long story short what is a minimum viable product right it is the first draft of a iteration cycle which is just made fit for use for the end users to test it and give feedback to improve the product in future in the further iterations right as simple as that now it might sound a bit complex to you but please go back and study the definition of minimum viable product you can uh, take it as sort of a prototyping okay as sort of a prototype that might be an oversimplification but that is what a minimum viable product uh, basically means okay it is something of a prototype that you are building to test the final product right however in this situation what is happening is the focused user group okay for which the product is being built uh, has communicated to you or to the product owner let's say that the released version of the minimum viable product is not meeting their expectations which action could have helped to avoid this issue okay so it is a bit of a retrospective learning which the question is asking which you need to document as sort of a learn from experience for your next sprint cycle or for your next iteration or for your next project right it is not asking that uh, what should you do now but it is asking that which action could have helped to avoid this issue so very important to understand this fine nuance of uh, this question stem right so it is a bit of a futuristic or let's say learn from experience mindset which the question is trying to test you on okay so let's look at the options one by one option a increase the status update frequency to all stakeholders okay now is that the right thing to do that uh, you increase the status update frequency to all stakeholders now again you check the superlative all here right so i discuss these kind of nuances in my daily posts in my pmp member community on youtube okay so whenever you see such kind of superlatives such as all or let's say throughout okay we'll come to option b in a second alarm bells should start ringing in your mind okay because uh, these kind of options are generally okay and i hint and i let's say flag the word generally okay it's not one size fits all but these type of options are generally incorrect okay because if you look at option a it is saying that okay you increase the status update frequency for all stakeholders okay now this status update might not mean anything to 
a lot of your stakeholders and this status update can mean the world to many of your stakeholders so you need to do that stakeholder profiling to understand that which status update to send to which stakeholder right so that is why option a is incorrect because it's trying to fit a one size fits all in this situation so that is why it is not the correct answer let's look at option b engage in risk response planning throughout the project again let's look at this uh, superlative throughout okay so when do you plan risk response okay it is very important for you to understand you plan risk response in the planning stage of the project uh, you do not plan it throughout the project now yes you can say that okay ray i plan it in the execution as well i plan it in the monitoring and controlling as well because i come back and recheck it etc etc however please look at this uh, situation that um, in this scenario what option b is saying that you need to engage in risk response planning throughout the project you might say that yes that makes sense that you are uh, doing a risk response planning throughout the project and you could have picked up this risk uh, quite earlier however let's uh, hold this option for now and see that okay if there is any better option okay otherwise we could have we could go with option b let's look at option c apply conflict management techniques again this is incorrect right because again it is a one size fits all too broad conflict management techniques apply what when where right so it is not something that is trying to resolve the problem by being specific okay it is giving you some generic um, uh, statements which is true in isolation but if you look it as per the context of the question that might be incorrect okay so option c is of course incorrect let's look at option d increase the stakeholder feedback frequency during the project okay now this is a very strong option guys what it is saying here is increase the stakeholder feedback frequency during the project so the way you take the feedback from the stakeholders or let's say the frequency within which you take the feedback from your stakeholders if you would have increased it you could have picked up this risk quite early in the project okay so that is why option d looks the correct option and if you check uh, option d here you will see that it doesn't use any kind of superlative that throughout all every always okay must okay none these kind of things right so option d seems like the correct option now if you go to option b guys option b is incorrect primarily because of the use of this word throughout okay throughout the project now risk response planning primarily happens in the planning stage of the project it does not primarily happen throughout the project okay now that is one of our weaker arguments i understand okay you can counter argue and say that ray uh risk response happens throughout the project as well because it happens in execution it happens in monitoring and controlling however let me give you this logic that for option b engaging in risk response planning throughout the project okay with whom that is the question right is it within your team or is it within your stakeholders because if you see the question stem it is primarily hinting at a problem that has arisen within your stakeholder group okay which is your focused user group now option b does not address that issue that okay even if i take for uh, the sake of argument that you are engaging in a risk response planning you need to have your stakeholder in line with your risk response plan as well right so that is what option b is getting generic because it is saying risk response planning but it is not uh, giving you uh, the fact that okay if you plan the risk response within your team if you plan the risk response within your uh, with your user group etc etc okay again it's a bit of a broad option and as per the pmp exam let's say uh, the principle with which i coach or i mentor you for your pmp exam i have always reiterated the fact that always go for an option which is the best of the four okay now option b is not definitely best of the four option d has a lot of positives which makes it best of the four option and that is why option d is the correct option positive number one it includes the term stakeholder feedback here which is primarily the issue that we have faced in this question scenario and uh, positive number two for option number d to be correct is it does not use any superlatives if you see here okay like all or throughout or each or every etc etc so keep an eye out for these kind of finer nuances within the options given to you in the PMP exam and uh, you should be okay right so the correct answer is option D I hope you are finding this exercise helpful right remember the target is to get all the five out of the five questions correct however the minimum expectation is that you will get at least four out of the five questions correct okay so here comes the fifth and the final question right so the final question guys please read the question and try to answer it before we take this together you can pause the video here if you wish to right so the drill will remain the same so let's get started
Right. A smartphone company is losing market share due to frequent innovations competitors are bringing to the market. A multidisciplinary agile team has been chartered to recommend ways to recover the lost market share. Which of the following strategies could be most beneficial to achieve this goal? And what is the goal we are trying to achieve to recover the lost market share for this uh, smartphone manufacturer? Okay, so let's look at the options one by one. Option A, plan to identify the value customers seek and map it with the value the current products offer. Okay, so this option looks quite generic, but uh, does it really? So let's hold this option for now, because if you look this option very closely, it is talking about value. Okay, uh, plan to identify the value customers seek and map it with the value the current products offer. So it is talking about a matching of the value proposition of the product with the customer, right? So looks like a good option, but let's hold it for now. Option B, focus on improving the company balance sheet and the profit and loss statement. Very broad, right? Okay, it is uh, beneficial for the company to improve upon the performance of the balance sheet or the profit and loss statement. However, you need to ask the question that is it enough to achieve this goal of recovering the lost market share? So having a good balance sheet and a profit and loss statement does guarantee that you will recover the lost market share, which you have lost to your competitors? Probably not, right? So that's option. So option B is definitely incorrect. Let's look at option C. Develop a pricing strategy competitive to the current market. Now, if you are doing that, you can say that, okay, I am uh, undercutting uh, on price uh, with respect to my competitors. However, do you really feel that you are bringing innovation to the table and you are matching the value which your customers are seeking just by giving them some price cuts and copying the innovation which your competitors have already brought right probably that's not a good approach right you need to understand what the gap is the gap is you have not able to or let's say not you but this uh, smartphone company right so they have not been able to understand the innovation value or let's say the value of innovation the customers have in their mind okay or the customers aspire for and that is why they have kept on losing market share now just trying to undercut on price probably not help let's take the example of apple right if uh, there is a replica or a clone of apple that comes in the market and uh, they undercut apple on price saying that okay the iphone 13 costs let's say 800 dollars but i will give you a similar phone that looks exactly like iphone 13 and like 600 dollars uh, will it really work probably not right so and the reason is uh, customers doesn't only look for price uh, they look for value for money which is value included with price right so that is why just having a pricing strategy will not work so option c is incorrect as well let's look at option d perform a focused group discussion to understand areas of customer dissatisfaction now you can do that however you need to understand that if you're doing a focus group discussion and trying to understand the areas of customer dissatisfaction with your current products uh, it is very important to understand this nuance guys your customers might not be dissatisfied with your product right uh, before iphone came in the market uh, where uh, the customers dissatisfied with the mobile phone experience so we were still having motorola right it was a good company which manufactured mobile phones we still had uh, let's say blackberry which was a sort of a style statement for a lot of uh, affluent uh, uh, class of people right so it was not that people were dissatisfied with motorola or people were dissatisfied with let's say blackberry however you need to understand that when it comes to this option d which is talking about performing a focus group discussion and you call the people in a room and ask them that okay are you dissatisfied with motorola or are you dissatisfied with let's say um, uh, blackberry they will say that no okay we are really happy with the product that you are offering however probably the value that apple provided uh, is something that the customers didn't even know that they wanted it right steve jobs had this uh, kind of uh, uh, a quote which he mentioned in one of his uh, seminars saying that okay uh, sometimes the customer doesn't even know what they want right and uh, we give the customer what they want and we make them aware that okay you need an ipod okay you need a mac you need an apple phone okay so those kind of things so that is where option a is much more let's say uh, focused that it is trying to identify the value customers seek and map it with the value the current products offer so it is touching the value proposition rather than trying to just find some gaps in the existing products right so that is why option a is incorrect now 
there is another way to look at this uh, whole analysis that we did okay so let's mark option d as incorrect first or so the correct answer to this question is option a so that's the logical thinking of how we arrived at the correct answer of option a now if you go with respect to a framework in terms of understanding that why option a is correct let's look at the four uh, values of agile manifesto now if you look at the four values of agile manifesto we all know this right i hope you know this by now that individuals and interactions over processes and tools working software over comprehensive documentation customer collaboration over contract negotiation responding to change over following a plan now if you look at the first one which is the individual and interactions over processes and tools this is what it links to the answer options if you go back to this answer options you will see so here is your agile manifesto individual and interactions over processes and tools now option a clearly fits the individual and interaction category over processes and tools right because option b company balance sheet profit and loss statement processes and tools option c pricing strategy a process right option d performing a focus group discussion fgd or focus group discussion is a tool right so tool process tool right incorrect 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 so you could have eliminated option b c and d based on the first value of the agile manifesto as well okay now that's how i have explained it to you why option a is incorrect here i have given you the logical reasoning as well and i have also given you the framework reasoning as well that why option a is incorrect so whenever you are approaching a question in your pmp exam or while you are practicing uh, for your pmp exam uh, think in these lines okay also think logically and also think uh, in terms of a framework and that is how your preparation will become solid and you will eventually pass the pmp exam definitely with with flying colors so the correct answer to this question is option a so that's the end of the quiz guys let me know in the comment section below how much you were able to score. I'd be very interested to know that. Also, if you have scored less, do not get demotivated, okay? You just need a bit more practice and a thorough analysis of your mistakes so that you get to know about your knowledge gaps. Now, to help you practice more and eventually get better, I am linking here the entire playlist of our monthly practice sessions for the PMP exam questions and answers. Please check if you have missed any of the monthly sessions and make sure you practice with me in those sessions as well. I'll see you again in the next video from this playlist.